Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines Tuning and Marine. In this video, I want to explain uh, why it takes me or take, should take everybody a long time to build an engine if you do it right. And, um, and by that, I mean, uh, let me explain the process of this this engine here. So this is the Merc Cruiser three, three liter four cylinder engine. And the uh, customer brought it to me and I checked it out and it had a blown head gasket. So I took the head off and sent it to a machine shop to have the head uh, redone and have it resurfaced. There was some rust and because the head gasket was blown, water got into number rust and the water got into cell number three and rusted up a little bit. And I, I wasn't really sure if the rust would clean up. So I went ahead and took the engine out, tore it down, and this engine was in very good shape inside. The bearings were dang near immaculate. Um, this engine looks like it's been rebuilt before. You still see the crosshatch pattern. And there you see the ring of rust right there on cell number three. But if you put your finger down in here, you don't you hardly feel it. I don't feel, let's see, what do I feel? So the rust is right here. I don't even feel that rust. So when the piston came out, it did scrape the rust off and clean it up. But, um, so I was thinking about telling the customer, that, so this engine co could possibly just be uh, honed and go back in with the same piston to save about, uh, I don't know, let's see, uh, um, $200 approximately for a bore and another $100 for piston. So you're looking about the same as the $300 by just honing these cylinders and going back with stock size pistons. Assuming this has not been bored out before. That's a big assumption, but I'll tell you about that in a minute So to check whether this thing could just be honed and not bored. I got my dial bore gauge And this is my dial bore gauge and um, I've talked about this tool in other videos. It's a fantastic tool And so I started on cylinder four and what I'm doing is uh, what I was gonna do is measure to check a bore you need to measure What I call top perpendicular, in other words, this is a perpendicular, this is perpendicular to the crank, crankshaft. Top perpendicular, bottom perpendicular, then go top in line and bottom and do bottom in line. So you take four measurements and you take the two uh, perpendicular measurements, the top minus the bottom gives you your taper and your uh, bottom minus bottom and top minus top gives you your uh, out of round. And you want to check the taper in both directions. And you want to check the out around in both, in both out around the top and out around the bottom. So that's four measurements per cylinder on the four cylinder. That's 16 measurements. Let's see, yeah, 16 measurements I would have to take to properly check this this engine. And the, so the first cylinder I checked, it checked out okay. It, it came out to I think one and a half. The worst, I think the top perpendicular, because this is where mostly wear occurs right here. Top perpendicular is one and a half thousandths over four inches. And if um, if you look at the specifications of the uh, Rear Cruiser manual, the pistons are one and a half thousand smaller than four inches. And if I've got one and a half thousand over four inches, that's three thousandths. The, the taller, the service limit on the bore size for this engine or the uh, piston clearance is three and a half thousand. So I was within that number. So in theory, this could have been just honed and reused. So, but before I decided to measure all four cylinders in this manner, like, you know, measure four here, four there, four there, four there, I decided to do a quick rundown of the, the worst, the worst place. So, to me, the worst place is right here, because the piston is at the top, the, uh, the piston is, is rocking this way, and the combustion gases push on the rings and push outward on the top, worse than doing the bottom. By the time it gets to the bottom, the, the pressure dissipated, but at the top, the combustion process uh, pushes on the rings and makes the, cylinder, the top of the cylinder wear more than the bottom. So in a used engine, you should see more wear on the top, in the, the top perpendicular direction than any of the other, the other three directions. So what I did was I measured this one, and uh, I'll show you what I got. So if I measure it, you see that, uh, let me see what I can get here. Uh, about let's see, a little over, a little less than one and a half thousand. Let me see if I can get a better look at that. Okay, about one point two thousandths of an inch on that one, which is pretty good. I was like, okay, that was good. And then I measured this one. And I got again close to the same number, a little bit worse. So it's about one point three thousandths of an inch. Still okay. What I'm looking for, two thousandths would be too much because the, the uh, piston's gonna be one and a half thousandths smaller than the bore, and then you're gonna have another one and a half thousandths. Or, so two thousandths is the max I want to have. So then I looked at this one, 
And again, this was a quick cursory check. Let me check this one here. And I'm at so close to the same number. See, it's one uh, about one and 1.3 thousand, somewhere in there. Still, okay. Then I got to number one. And look what I found. So, wow, three thousands of clearance right there. This board is worn out. See that? Three thousands clearance on that cylinder on the top. So you, you take that three thousandths and add to the one and a half thousandths that the piston is going to be smaller than the bore, and you're at four and a half thousandths clearance. That's too much. This engine is out of out of tolerance on that cylinder number one. So because I stopped, so because I stopped and made a quick measurement on my worst case plate or the worst wearing location in this engine, I was able quickly to determine that this engine does need to be bored. So I'm glad I did that. And uh, it'll save you time if you go ahead and measure the top perpendicular on all your bores before you try to measure all the other uh, dimensions to get your uh, tolerance. Now, if this was an engine that came back to a machine shop, I wouldn't expect to find one bore that bad, uh, out of whack that bad. So in that case, I, even on a, on a machine, on a, on a engine that comes back from a machine shop, I still do these four measurements to check the machine shop's work. And I'll give you an example of that. So this is a piece of uh, cardboard that I wrote down all the measurements on the V8. This is a V8 and that's a V8. This is two engines, by the way. And so I got on cylinder number one, I've got four measurements. Cylinder number two, I've got four measurements. And what I was doing, I was taking the measurements and my son was writing them down and doing the calculations while I was taking the measurements and, and moving from cylinder to cylinder. And I, with this dial bore gauge, I can do this process fairly quickly. But um, again, on a used engine, if you're trying to decide whether or not to keep uh, keep it or uh, decide whether or not to reuse it as is, do your top perpendicular first on all four cylinders, and that'll probably tell you whether this engine can be reused without machine. So, um, and you can see that all these numbers um, take it takes a lot of time to do this. And if you do an engine right, this is what you should do. You should check your out of round. Machine shops are not uh, they are not perfect. They make mistakes sometimes. So you can get an engine with a, if you're out of round, I think here we had the out of round at uh, two thousandths was the max. And, uh, and this is all out of on the Merck Cruiser service manual, by the way. Out of round on the cylinder is two thousandths max and the taper is one thousandths max. So we checked all the tapers and all out of rounds on all eight cylinders in this engine. And by the way, the piston clearance is 0.0025 to 0.0035. This particular engine was a, uh, um, Let's see, this was a uh, 5.0 liter. That's, that's, that's pretty high for a, a 350. 350s are typically a little bit smaller. Uh, the reason is because 350s use high protective pistons and the, I think the five, uh, the five liters, the 305s, use straight cast pistons. So that's the difference. So anyway, I just want to explain, uh, show you how, uh, what the, the precision and process it takes to build an engine properly and it's a good reason why a lot of engines, a lot of marine engines don't uh, last because the, I have, I have serious doubts that, a, that, a, uh, that some of these engine builders are going to the trouble to take all these measurements to check the bore. And let's say you do find a bad bore, what are you going to do? You've got you to send it back to the machine shop and get it repaired. Which means they'd have to bore all, all the cylinders over again and uh, cut them to the next size up. Uh, fortunately, I haven't had that happen yet. I have had some that are marginally out of uh, or marginally more than I would like to have seen but they were still in inspect so I went ahead and used them but um, so anyway um, the machine shops can make mistakes and you need to do, you need to take these measurements to make sure that you're building a, a solid engine and uh, in this case on this used engine I, I was 85% uh, sure I was gonna just hone it and put the uh, original the, the pistons back in it and put new rings on it and I, I got my dial bore gauge and checked that cylinder just to be just to be safe. And sure enough, it was out of spec. So I'm having to send this to a machine shop. So uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I uh, hope it explains why uh, a, a good engine builder, or a good a good engine uh, shop, will go to the trouble to take all these measurements so you get a quality product. So thanks for watching. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe to my channel.